In this video, I'll explain how to set up the Smart Endzone camera hardware for football. We recommend watching this video during your first time setup of the system. Your first time probably takes about 45 minutes to an hour to become familiar with everything. After that, a typical setup time should only take about 15 to 30 minutes. This is mostly only because of the time that it takes to walk the equipment across the field to each of the three setup locations, as well as secure and extend the end zone tower itself. First, let's look at an overview of the full three-point network, just as you'd be setting it up on game night. There are three stations, press box, sideline, and end zone, with a combined five antennas in total. The three round bridge antennas will link the system together at long distances so that communication is exchanged between press box, end zone, and sideline. You'll have an iPad antenna in the press box as well as another iPad antenna with a rectangular booster component on the sideline. These antennas create a Wi-Fi connection that you'll connect your iPads to iPads in the press box will connect to the Wi-Fi created by the iPad antenna in the press box. iPads on the sideline will connect to the Wi-Fi created by the sideline iPad antenna with the rectangular booster. These Wi-Fi connections have different names, but they're both part of the same network, meaning everyone will see the same footage regardless of location. You may also have an optional edge box up in the press box that will add a second angle to your replay system. The press box kit is the master station that creates your network. Without the press box router, the system will not work at all. We recommend powering up these components first. Plug in the router, an optional edge box if you have one, using the power strip in the kit and its adjoining cords. The Edgebox Ethernet cable is probably already connected to the router. If it isn't, make sure that it's connected. Turn on your camera and ensure that you see a picture in the viewfinder. Depending on the camera model, you might use the built-in USB cord in the hand strap to power it with a USB extender plugged into an outlet, or connect it to an external battery with sufficient power to last the duration of the game. Connect the HDMI cable from your camera's HDMI out to the connect camera port in the orange edge box. It's very important to know that the end zone tower must use a Sony Handycam, but a camera that's connected to an edge box doesn't necessarily need to be Sony. However, if you don't use a Sony camera for your edge box, make sure that your camera model is compatible with edge replay. It must be capable of outputting a 720p resolution from its HDMI out port. For nearly all Sony cameras, it's a good idea to double check that your HDMI output resolution is set to either auto or 720p. You can check this by going to menu, setup, and scrolling down to HDMI resolution. 720p or auto will work, but 1080i or 1080p will not work. If attempting to use a brand other than Sony, contact support for more information on compatible non-Sony cameras. Please recognize that we highly recommend Sony. It's also a good idea to ensure that your camera's power save feature is turned off, which is also in the setup section of the menu. Next is the press box network equipment. Remove the tripod stand, press box bridge antenna, and the press box iPad antenna from the network bag. Then, remove the small antenna ears found in the inside zipper pocket. Screw the ears into the iPad antenna and position them at a 45 degree angle. The iPad antenna must be in the same room as the iPad that's controlling the system. After all of this, we plug in the PressBox bridge antenna as well as the PressBox iPad antenna into the router. Make sure that the PressBox iPad antenna is upright somewhere in the PressBox or wherever your iPads in the PressBox are going to be. Please note that all of your iPads in the PressBox must be in the same room or vicinity as the iPad antenna. 
This includes the iPad you'll be using to control the smart camera, which must be in the press box, not on the sideline. If even one iPad is divided from the antenna by a wall, a roof, or even a window, you may have connectivity issues. Don't put the iPad antenna on the outside of the press box if your iPads are on the inside, and don't have iPads in separate rooms. They all need to be in the same room as the antenna. Also note that it's highly recommended that you use whichever iPad is your newest, most powerful iPad as the control iPad to control the end zone camera. There's an HDMI out port on edge boxes that can be used to connect to a monitor, but this is completely optional to use. You may have a slightly different router, but it should function the same way. Before we move on, we can first test that your network and edge box are working. On your iPad, go to Settings and find the Pressbox Wi-Fi. Connect using the password that can be found on the inside of the top of your Pressbox Kit hard case. If this is your first time using an iPad with the system, or your first time setting the system up, it's best to double check that the SportScope app's necessary permissions are enabled. Go to your iPad settings screen, and on the left side, scroll down to Privacy. Ensure that Location Services is turned on. Next, on the left side, scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for SportScope. Ensure that Location is set to Always, and local network is set to on. Note that if location isn't allowed, the app will say no network, and if local network isn't allowed on the app, it will say not connected. It's also important to turn Bluetooth off here in the iPad settings. Ideally, Bluetooth should be off on all iPads, but especially on the control iPad. Next, open the SportScope app and go to the cameras page. If you have an edge box, you should see your press box camera status say ready. If it says requires upgrade in orange, tap the orange upgrade button next to shut down and restart. This process will take about a minute for the upgrade status to cycle. Be patient and wait for the status to show ready. This is what your kit will look like when it's done. It's important that the press box bridge antenna is angled down and pointed in between where your sideline and end zone bridge antennas will be set up. This antenna will talk with both antennas on the ground at the same time, so we'll want to shoot the gap between where they're going to be. In this example, it should be pointed between the 25 yard line on the home side and the closer hash behind the end zone. This also means that we'll want the bridge antenna to be as free of obstructions as possible. If your press box window is small, or the window can't be opened, that could pose a problem. Often it's better to set up the bridge antenna on top of the press box or somewhere outside of the press box so that it has a nice clear shot down to the bridges on the ground. If this is the case, we recommend using a long ethernet cable with the bridge so that you can place it wherever you need. The Ethernet cable can easily be swapped out by opening the latch on the back of the bridge. We want to avoid metal obstructions in the antenna's path because they can cause interference. Also, ensure that the tripod holding the bridge antenna won't get knocked over by the wind. You may want to attach it to a fence using a Velcro strap. This will allow you to raise the antenna well above metal interferences like fence poles, chain link, or other obstructions which are notorious for disrupting wireless signals. Do not skip this step. Making sure you have an open, clear shot between all three bridge antennas is extremely crucial. Failure to do so may result in poor system performance. Next, let's move on to setting up the end zone kit. If you have a 30-foot tower, make sure the four locking legs are fully extended and locked. If you have the 20-foot tower, make sure that the bottom stabilizer is down, not up, and that the legs are fully extended and locked via the mast knobs. For all towers, the center mast should be resting on the ground. This is very important. 
If high winds are expected, you'll also want to consider using sandbags to improve stability. For windy areas, also consider lowering the tower below its maximum height. Please be advised that a particularly strong gust of wind can blow the tower over. Next, mount the head to the top of the tower by rotating the head 360 degrees around the thread. Try not to cross threads and make sure you spin the entire unit, not just the black connector at the bottom of the smart camera. Do not mount the head while it is powered on. To be safe, make sure nothing is connected to the battery. Mounting while powered on risks locking the motors and potentially breaking them when mounting. Now turn the Sony camera on and connect it to the battery. There are three types of smart camera head battery solutions. For our most up-to-date model, connect the USB extension cord from the camera's handle strap USB connector to the USB port on the battery labeled camera in white. For our cylinder battery model, turn on the cylinder battery first by pressing the small LED button, if there is one, before connecting to the camera's handle strap USB connector. The button LED light must be on before connecting to the camera with most cylinder batteries. For our single battery model, connect the USB extension cord from the handle strap USB connector to the USB port on the battery labeled camera in white just like our modern version. This is an older style of battery, and we recommend that you upgrade to the two battery style for longer battery life and greater reliability. Note the disappearance of the battery icon in the top right corner of the camera's viewfinder. This is how you verify the camera is using external power successfully, regardless of battery type. Next, connect the HDMI cable from the camera into the port labeled Connect Camera on the left side of the head. The camera should be facing the front Velcro battery. Do not connect the camera to the HDMI out port on the right. Then, connect the motor power cable, color-coded yellow, into the motor port on your battery. The motor cord color coding is always yellow. The zoom cable should already be plugged into the Sony camera, but if for some reason it isn't, go ahead and do this next. If you encounter zoom issues while testing, unplug this cord and plug it right back in. If zoom problems persist, turn the Sony camera completely off, wait for 10 seconds, then reopen the viewfinder so that it turns back on, and then reconnect. Next, we set up our end zone network. We need the end zone bridge, the 30 foot ethernet cable, and the end zone kit. Attach the round end zone bridge antenna to the tower as high up on the leg as you can and point it upward directly at the press box antenna. Make sure there are no obstructions and that the angle is correct. This is very important. If you later find that the system is not very responsive, lower the angle of the bridge in the end zone by a few degrees. This reduced angle can sometimes make all the difference, so remember this option. In this example, the press box bridge antenna is on top of the press box, and our end zone bridge is pointing right at it. Next, connect the white PoE device to the end zone network battery and plug both the blue and the black ethernet cables into the PoE device. You can now connect the other end of the long blue ethernet cable to the port on the bottom of the head. Also note that there are two black USBs next to the ethernet port that should always be plugged in. Make sure that they're plugged in securely. Now, this is extremely important. You must use strain relief on the long blue ethernet cord. It protects the ethernet port in the bottom of the head from being damaged. Failure to use strain relief properly will almost certainly result in eventual damage to the port. After this is connected, give the cable a gentle tug to make sure all of the weight is on the clip and not on the port. If you haven't already connected it, make sure the bottom end of the blue ethernet cord is plugged into the PoE device. Now, on the network battery, flip the AC power switch to on in order to supply power to the network. 
You'll see the battery screen turn on and the display will show the current battery charge. For older styles of batteries, hold the power button until the green light on the outlet comes on. Place the battery and the PoE device into the case and gently close it to protect it from the elements including direct sunlight. The cords should come out of the front of the case, but don't latch the case as this can pinch the cords. Finally, connect the computer power cable, color coded in blue, to the battery port labeled power or computer in blue. It's important to plug the computer cord in last in order to avoid potential zoom problems. If you do it this way, then your zoom should work every time. You may also need to press the button on your smart camera head battery in order to make sure that it's delivering power. You should see four blue lights come on. The rest of the setup order isn't very important so long as you plug the blue marked computer USB power cord in last. Make sure to double check all connections before moving on. If the head is talking to the network, you'll see a flashing light in the ethernet port. Verify that the bridge antenna has linked to the press box bridge. You should see six lights in total, the power light, the main light flashing, and then the four link lights. If you don't see all four link lights, then you most likely need to readjust the angle of the bridge. If you're expecting inclement weather, you can protect the Handycam and motorized head from rain using two protective rain gear parts, the custom enclosure bag and the lens hood. First adjust the position of the Sony Handycam on its mounting plate. Then fasten the lens hood to the plate directly in front of the camera lens using the perpendicular slot and the wing nut. Finally, pull the enclosure bag over the entire unit. There's Velcro on the back to make this easier. Close the Velcro together and then use the two drawstrings to cinch the enclosure around the lens hood and at the bottom of the camera head. This ensures that the entire unit and all its ports are fully enclosed and protected from the rain. Before raising the end zone tower, we recommend setting up the sideline kit and testing the system. Sideline equipment is stored in the same network bag as the press box equipment, as well as the sideline kit hard case. You'll want to set up your sideline equipment on roughly the 25 yard line closest to your end zone. First, you'll remove the sideline tripod from the network bag. The tripod should have a round bridge antenna, as well as an iPad antenna affixed to it. Set the tripod up so that the round bridge antenna is pointed up at the press box bridge antenna. Next, attach the rectangular booster to the sideline iPad antenna with its two short cables. Then, ensure that the rectangular booster is pointed down the sideline, parallel with the field. This booster connects to the coach's iPads on the sideline, so make sure it's unobstructed by bleachers, coolers, fences, and that it's generally above where players' heads are going to be. Next, open up your sideline kit hard case. Inside, you'll see a network battery as well as a switch, which looks like a router. Plug both of the black antenna cables into the switch. These two cables are interchangeable, but must both be plugged into a port marked with a black dot. Next, plug in the switch first and flip the network battery's power to on. Your switch may look different, but it will function the exact same way. If you have an older network battery, be sure to turn the battery on by pressing and holding the power button found near the outlet plug for approximately 4 seconds until the green light turns on. Make sure to attach the sideline kit hard case to the base of the tripod to ensure that it won't tip over. Next, extend the tripod up as high as possible. Make sure to point the round bridge antenna up the press box bridge antenna and to point the rectangular booster down the sideline to where the iPads will be. After a few minutes, the sideline bridge will link up to the press box bridge and you should see six blue lights on the side in total, one for power, a flashing main light, as well as four link lights. If you see fewer than four link lights, you'll need to readjust your bridge connection. Let's review our network. The end zone bridge antenna should be pointed up at the press box bridge antenna. 
the sideline bridge should also be pointed directly up at the press box bridge antenna. The press box bridge antenna should be pointed in between the two, creating a triangle of connectivity focused on the press box bridge, wherever it may be. Now that the hardware is all connected, it's best to temporarily connect an iPad to the sideline network in front of the booster antenna and test the control functions of the end zone camera. Go into settings and connect to the Sportscope sideline Wi-Fi. The password will be in the sideline case and is identical to the Pressbox password. Once connected, navigate to the Sportscope app. Check your cameras from the cameras page to ensure that they both say ready. If you don't have a press box angle edge box, then you'll only see the end zone. You can see that the end zone angle is displaying a live video and the press box is not. This is normal. On the home page, you'll either see the most recent game or the demo game. Note that you cannot do anything from the demo game. In order to control the system, you must create a new game or use an existing created game. Go to Games and select New in order to start a new game. Put in your team's name as well as the opponent's name. Make sure that both cameras say Ready and are both highlighted in white. Note that here you have the option of deselecting a camera angle if you don't want to use it in a game. This might come in handy if you want to use the system with only one angle, in which case you would deselect the angle, which would be flashing not connected in red. Angles that are selected will have a white background. For this example, make sure that both are selected, then you can start the game. Next, make sure that the end zone is in the center of your home screen. If it's not, then tap the box labeled end zone in the corner to bring it to the center. Then bring the controls up on the right hand side to start the live feed of the end zone angle. If the live feed still does not appear and you're sure that the center of the screen says end zone and that the control bar on the right side of the screen has been expanded, check the preferences menu and ensure that live feed is turned on. Once an end zone live feed is established, Test its functionality by placing your fingers on the screen to ensure pan, tilt, and zoom are all working. The joystick on the right controls pan and tilt. The plus minus controller on the left controls the zoom. If the zoom isn't working, please unplug and replug the zoom cable. You can also resolve this by turning off the Sony Handycam itself and waiting for the status on the iPad screen to say camera offline in blue, then turning the camera back on. This can be done manually by closing the camera viewfinder, or you can tap on the power icon in the top right hand control panel in the app. If you have a two or three angle system, you should see a black box in the corner displaying the status of your press box camera. This is normal. You won't see the live feed for that angle. Only the end zone has a live feed for controlling the camera. Record a few test clips to make sure that the replay is working correctly. You'll see the clips appear at the bottom of the page. For a two angle system, you can switch between the replay for each angle using the picture in picture corner window. The control bar on the right side of the home screen also has an aperture symbol that enables our Cam Assist feature. Feel free to give it a try, and for more information, see our Cam Assist instructions. Make sure to close the control bar for any iPads that will be viewing replays. Only the control iPad, which should be in the press box, should have the controls visible. Another thing to quickly check while setting up is the recording settings available by tapping on the white cog wheel on the right side of the control panel and at the bottom make sure that record to iPad is on and record to camera is off. This configuration is highly preferable for football and it prevents some potential zoom errors that can occur. For filming other sports, such as soccer, your record settings will actually be reversed. Record to iPad off, record to camera on. 
We've covered the operator controls, but most iPads will be watching replays. The video player allows you to pause, rewind, fast forward, and go to the next or previous play. As long as auto tagging is turned off, which is the default setting, you can tag plays by color coded offense, defense, kicking using the ODK buttons below the record and cam assist buttons. You can also make notes on plays with drawings or on a whiteboard and save them for review by clicking draw on the left hand side. You can select various colors to draw with and if you click save in the bottom left, the drawing will be saved to that clip and can be referenced later if needed. More in-depth review features are available, such as adding custom tags, sorting by your tags, favoriting plays, tagging down and distance manually or with auto tag, and even reviewing stats based off of your tagging. Tagging and other replay features are discussed in more detail in their own articles and have their own videos in our help center. If the tests were successful, you can now raise the end zone tower. Keep one hand in contact with the tower stages at all times. Make sure the ethernet cord is secured to the pole with a large carabiner clip that is provided. Raise one section at a time and lock it in place before moving on to the next. Return to the press box in the control iPad. If you brought the control iPad to the sideline for testing, you may want to go to the Wi-Fi settings and forget the sideline network to make sure that the operator stays on the correct press box Wi-Fi network. It's also best to turn the iPad's Wi-Fi off entirely before taking it to the locker room or if moving said iPad out of the range of the antenna it's currently connected to. Once the game is over, always scroll through all the replay clips for both angles and tap the blue download arrows if there are any. Be sure to alternate from end zone to press box or vice versa after scrolling down through all the thumbnails, checking for plays that need to be downloaded. This will download any plays that might not have gotten downloaded during the game. You only need to do this on the iPad you're going to upload the plays from, but do this before disconnecting any equipment so that all plays are synced and you don't have to set up the equipment again later to obtain missing clips. You can share or delete games by using the select option on the right hand side in the games menu. The share option is how you'll upload a game by exporting all of its clips off the iPad and onto your computer or to a service such as Huddle or Quick Cut. Both services are discussed in more detail in separate articles with their own videos in our Help Center. To access the Help Center, go to the troubleshooting page and scan the QR code with your smartphone. This will take you straight to our Help Center online. We highly recommend using this to solve most issues as the Help Center can answer most troubleshooting problems and setup questions with a simple search. In general, you'll want to make sure that all of your iPads are compatible with the system. Use the link in the description to see our up-to-date compatibility list. The blue column identifies which iPads are capable of control and which are for viewing replay only. If you're using the AI Cam Assist feature, you'll look at the purple column to see which iPads are compatible and what they're capable of. Ideally, you'll have a total of five iPads or less, including the control iPad, regardless of Cam Assist use. It's possible to use more, but the system will operate more efficiently if fewer iPads are connected. It's also recommended that you keep the total number of iPads connected to the sideline network down to three or less for best network performance. If you're experiencing any issues, the system info page can be a great resource. This info can be useful in diagnosing certain problems. The system info page allows you to scan your network using the scan button in the top right corner. Be patient as the scan can sometimes take up to 30 seconds in order to complete. Once complete, the page will display information about the iPad in your hand at the top, then the antenna devices, information about the edge box and smart camera, and most importantly, all the other devices connected to the network at the bottom. This information is extremely helpful to determine if there are issues on the network causing the system to operate slowly 
or cause video lag during end zone control. Look for any data that might show up in red text, as this is an indicator of a problem. The system info page is also covered in more detail in its own article in our Help Center. Before your next game, make sure that both network batteries and your pan tilt head batteries are charged overnight using the provided charging cords. For our latest version of network battery, which has a small display screen, it's very important you only use the 15 volt charging cord and not the power cord used for the router or switch. Thank you for watching this instructional video and for choosing SportScope for all of your end zone replay needs.